Debbie Leach. I'm a psychologist. I work in child development and parenting. I have done all my professional life. I'm here to talk about divorce. Wherever you are right now, if there are children or young people around you, about 50% of them will have parents who are separating or have separated. But the other side of that negative stuff is that the same kind of research that tells us how damaging it is to children tells us, if we listen, how to make it less damaging. My name's Melanie Gill. Um, I'm a psychologist and also a forensic consultant, and I'm one of the founders of the Mindful Policy Group. Penny is also one of the founders. I've written this book because I'm a child of divorce myself, so that's always had me a bit focused on the topic. Mindful Policy Group was um, originally formed so that we could bring expert knowledge, psychological knowledge, um, psychiatric knowledge, neuroscientific knowledge about how all humans develop to the movers and the shakers in society. And of course that means policy makers, it means the media. And if we can bring knowledge through these people, we can ultimately get it to the normal population and we can therefore try and change society for the better. Okay, I've written this book, which incidentally isn't called Divorce, it's called Family Breakdown, and that's because what it's about is what happens to children when their parents separate, split up, and really it seems to be completely irrelevant whether they were married in the first place or not. Some of the things I want people to take from this book are that parents matter even more and for even longer than everybody knows already. And one of the big points that I think I find most interesting is that no child is too young or too old to be affected. And I think this is something that's quite tough for parents to, to realise because a lot of people either think, oh well he's too little to be affected, you know he'll stay with his mum, that'll be fine. Sorry, wrong again, effects start before birth because anything that has an effect on the mum's emotional state has an effect on the fetus. And a lot of other parents say, well, we stayed together till the children were old enough to understand. In other words, we waited till they were six formers or maybe at college. Wrong again, the, the effect on young people is usually absolutely devastating. Why? Because even if they're living away and maybe have got families of their own, it sheds doubt on everything they thought they knew about what happened to them in childhood. In other words, it messes up their sense of their own history. And the final one is to do with the legal profession and the fact that a lot of what goes on in family law makes it worse, not better, for children when parents separate. And there began to be signs and sounds that members of the legal profession were aware of this and ready perhaps to begin to be a bit less um, uh, adult focused and to think more about the effect on children. of our main areas is to get it to policy makers so they're making far more empathic policy and of course within this area that we're talking about it's very much needed. Within the, the last two three years it's become increasingly clear that the current legal system cannot support the level of adversariality to do with family law and to do with parents separating. Um, this is actually known in, in other countries. In America, the um, economic constraints came in about 10 years ago, same in Australia. 
Um, because, for instance, the adversarial system, meaning actually the fight between parents, um, can sometimes go on for eight, ten years. Um, we simply do not have the finances anymore to, to support that, that sort of case. The economic constraints have put a real burden on family lawyers to change very quickly. It's not bringing in this knowledge fast enough, and this book is most definitely going to help. The impact I'm looking for from this book is really to do more with family law than with parents, funnily enough. The impact we're looking for from this initiative is to refocus the entire system, the legal system, onto the child. And although um, you know, there's a belief that the system has been focused on the child within family proceedings, it's actually not been the case because of the adversarial system. Once you have an understanding of exactly how all humans develop, how all children develop, and the damage that's being done to them through parental separation, and the difference this knowledge can make, everything actually changes. The system becomes far more collaborative. And much like Penny was talking about that what is needed is parents to continue collaborating as parents, what we actually need is the entire legal system to also start collaborating and having more understanding of actually the internal dynamics of a family. Because a child's world is their entire family. Once you can assess correctly the attachment relationships that are going on within a family, you can find out where you can tweak so that you can get the best out of the parents you can get more understanding of the child to the parents, and that has to be better for the child. Whatever the age of children we're talking about, what matters most when parents separate isn't the physical separation between them, all the changes in circumstances and all of that, it's the enmity between the parents that does the damage. The thing I'm kind of um, campaigning for, if you like, is something I've called mutual parenting. You go on being mum and dad, even though you've stopped every other relationship between you. What I'm looking for from the legal pr profession is to begin to embrace this knowledge, want to ask more questions about the knowledge, and want to have, you know, increase their understanding of attachment science. A book is only a book. We all know not a huge number of people read a huge number of books, but a book that a profession will kind of used to spearhead something is a very different matter. And it's sort of looking as if this is a book that lawyers and judges and people in the family court system feel that they can use. And if that's the case, if they can use it to help their clients and the people who are in their system, then it will have done all and more than I could possibly hope.